Gabbit Media. Hello again, it's Grant Abbott from Gabbit Media and we're looking at how to make a music video. In this episode we'll be looking again at camera work, light, but mainly locations and what I call the walk-along sing shot. So what do I mean by the walk-along sing? Well it's a tracking shot where the singer is walking towards you singing and you're tracking the camera backwards. It's a really common convention in music videos. It looks quite nice because the background is moving, the singer's moving, a dynamic looking shot with lots of energy. It's important of course to have some kind of steady cam to get this to work properly. So if again you haven't bought a steady cam, then try one of the techniques listed here. Here I'm just using a tripod as a counterbalance and it's working okay. The difficulty is I like to use my camera set on 50mm and it gives a really nice shallow depth of field but it can be difficult to control when you're doing this. So maybe it's worth trying that once and then trying it with a more wide angle, something like 28mm or wider. It's important to use a variety of shots, then you can cut between them, so close-ups, medium shots and even long shots but use the long shots sparingly and you've got to have the right location. So let's talk about location here. We found this really nice spot, it's an underpass that goes under a dual carriageway and there's lots of graffiti down there. The lights are quite interesting. It looks kind of grimy and dingy, but has the right feel for a music video. We've also done a shot in the woods. It doesn't particularly suit this style of video, but it's just to give you another idea of different locations that you could use and how to film within those locations. Both of these locations can be seen here on Google Maps but it's fairly easy, just find a woods close by to you and an underpass close to you and it's probably got some graffiti in it somewhere. The graffiti offers quite nice vibrant colours for the background. These tunnels or underpasses are actually quite good for available light. If we look at this beginning shot here, uh, you can see that I've overexposed the background and it looks like Darren's a silhouette and he's coming out of this bright, angelic type of light, which gives a nice interesting look. Again, looking back to our last video where we talk about backlighting, well this has it in abundance. Where possible I've put the available light in the background, so when we're in the woods you can see I've got the sun in the background bursting through the trees. And it's important to try and get the time of day right where the sun is quite low. This is often known as the golden hour. We weren't actually shooting at the golden hour here. Autumn and springtime tend to have quite a low sun anyway, so they're a good time of the year to shoot. But if you're filming in the summer then often the sun's quite high midday so don't film then choose the golden hour which, which is an hour just after sunrise or an hour just before sunset, generally speaking around an hour anyway. I've also tried to use the available lights in the subway in the background where possible. We've got no lights on the camera, we've got no extra lights, it is all available light and it shows what you can do if you're thinking carefully about the position of your camera. As well as that think about your aperture settings. To get this really overexposed shot I've set the aperture really low. I prefer working with a low aperture because then you get a shallow depth of field. I particularly like this shot. We've got a close-up of Darren. He's lit by the tunnel lights and we've got the opening of the tunnel as our backlight. So that's it for part two. Think carefully about your camera work. Try out the walk-along scene, a common convention of music videos. Think carefully about your available light and the position of your camera and choose suitable locations. Hope this helps.